Hello, I'm Lyndall Cooley, and you're watching All Together Now with Roy and Melanie Fields. The following program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Run With Fire Ministries. Today on All Together Now. in your glory there's deliverance in your glory and I so wanted to see God just so be God so I would almost go against the grain of what was expected of me because I knew how to I knew how to pull the right levers sing the right songs get the audience with me and I just didn't want to do that <laughs> And you're watching all together now. And you're watching all together now. Talk about worship, salvation, and healing. And you're watching all together. God's gonna get a hold of you. Did you hear me? I said God's gonna get a hold of you. Get ready because your life is about to get rocked. It's about Jesus. Founded on salvation, worship, and healing, we run with fire. Sounds of revival, intimate worship, and fresh word. Live from the Runwood Fire Studio in Orlando, Florida. All together now. With Roy and Melanie Fields.
We'll be right back to All Together Now. Well, I know you've been waiting for this, and it's finally here. It's the new live DVD and CD stand-up by Roy Fields. I mean, as we were traveling around the world, Roy was writing these songs right in the midst of revival, and we were like, let's get them on CD. So we went to Binghamton, New York, in this live worship experience, and we, got, we caught this live atmosphere. I mean, the CD is 14 songs, the DVD, almost three hours of this live worship experience, plus all these behind the scene interviews about Roy's life and how God touched him early on. We just want to get this into your hands. Call that number that's on your screen right now. It's just a love gift of $35 or more. We'll get into your home, into your car, wherever the presence of God can touch you. Hello, I'm Lyndall Cooley and you're watching All Together Now with Roy and Melanie Fields. We'll be right back. We now return to All Together Now. And hi, welcome back to All Together Now. I'm your host, Roy Fields. Yeah, this is a very special week of programming because we have a guest here that I've been trying to get for five years. A lot of you may know him, but some of you may not know who he is, but I want to tell you about who he knows. When I was 18 years old, I met Jesus through the Brownsville Revival in one of the most powerful ways during worship. I want to even say that this program is probably one of the most powerful programs we've done here on this broadcast because this man has touched my life in ways that I can't even fathom to take the time to tell you because God used him powerfully. But I came down to the altar and gave my life to Christ and returned to the Lord at 18. My life has been completely changed. The man that I have here is a very well-known man but let me tell you something about this guy. He's a real, honest, legitimate, genuine man of God. Loves God with all of his heart. Worships the Lord. Makes Jesus real to people. He's sold somewhere around 2.3 million records have gone around of his worship. He's traveled to 12 countries. Been in ministry for 36 years. Would you please welcome to the Run With Fire studio for the very first time ever, my good friend, Lendell Cooley. Bro, how you doing? Oh my gosh, good to be here, finally. Finally you're here. You've been here a long time. I know, man. Well, you're in Nashville now. Yes, sir. So now you're here in Florida and you're going back? In Florida, headed back, yes, headed sir. Headed back. Lendl, in 1996, that was the year I traveled down to see you. Tell us quickly about the Brownsville Revival. What happened to you? How'd you get there? What happened during it? And then let's go on from there. That's a lot of questions. I know. Though. I know. Sorry. Uh, well, I was in Nashville, Tennessee in 1994. I had been there for about four years. And I really sensed that my, my season was about to change. And I didn't know where it was going to be. I get a call from John Kilpatrick, who's the pastor of Brownsville Assembly of God, Pensacola, Florida. I knew of him, but I didn't know him personally. I'd met him a couple of times, right. kind of an acquaintance. Yeah. Uh, my dad had listened to him preach on tapes for years, and back in the old days of tapes. Right. So uh, the audio cassettes. Didn't see, didn't see these. Right. So he he would listen to uh, to John preach, and so John called me on the phone. He said, "Hey, I've got um, my worship leader, uh, worship leader, music director guy is leaving. His parents are ill, and he's got to go take care of them up in Knoxville, Tennessee." And he said, I picked the phone up two or three times to call you, didn't feel like you'd come, but uh, would like to talk to you about becoming a worship leader. And so he invited me to come. Uh, that would have been the very beginning of 1995. And of course you were already a worship leader, right? Kind of. <laughs> Tell me that story. Kind of. Well, I wasn't really. I mean, I, I led worship in my father's church, mm -hmm. and then I had, uh, I had gone to Nashville to work in a church. And I'd hired on at that church as an arranger. They had a really massive choir, so I was their arranger. So I really was there to be the piano player and the arranger. I wasn't there to lead worship. And uh, one Sunday, uh, the guy who led the singing was going to be out of town, 
and we were sitting in the staff meeting and the pastor said, hey, um, Lyndall, uh, we need a worship leader this week and our guys are all out and I assume since you can play and you're a preacher's kid, you could probably do it. So I led worship that Sunday and then and then it just kind of caught on. So you got I started, thrown into it. I got thrown into it. So I started, <laughs> then I started doing it on Sunday nights, then more and more Sunday mornings. So I was doing it quite a bit by the time I left that church. And uh, then Pastor John invited me to come. He had a big choir at the time at, at Brownsville Assembly. And that's kind of how I got there. And that was uh, my first Sunday, I believe. I keep using this, <laughs> this date. I probably should research it. I believe Palm Sunday on 1995 was April 9th. I believe it was. Okay. That would have been my first Sunday there. Okay. So I drove down and I basically did a, um, a choir rehearsal on Saturday night. Yeah. And then we did Palm Sunday service. And then, of course, Father's Day was just what? That was April 9th. Uh, Father's Day was the second Sunday of June. And that's when revival broke loose. Do you know, I remember seeing a video that showed, I think it was on 95, the Father's Day. They kept singing, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes, over and Blessed over. be the name of the Lord. Right? Be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the but name people were getting touched by God like. I wasn't even there. You weren't there yet? No, I, oh, no, I was there. I started in April 9th of 95. Okay. But I had agreed to take a choir uh, to the Ukraine for a tour. Okay. And kind of play and help because I had worked with that choir several years. And uh, what we would do when we go do these choir tours, ministry tours in the Ukraine, we'd go to these big concert halls and we'd do full on concerts. We okay. had soloists and singers and a lot of well known folks that, that, are, that have been through music through the years. And we would rent halls and sell tickets because the Ukrainians wouldn't come if it was free. So we'd sell <laughs> tickets and then we'd turn around and give them. Uh, free awesome. gifts and groceries and stuff awesome. as a blessing equal to what so they So you're doing missionary work. I was doing mission work. So we had like wow. 178 people, I guess, in the Ukraine. And I, I would go over a week early and work with Russian and Ukrainian musicians. And we'd uh, bring all the music. We'd learn the whole the whole program, all the tunes, about 15, 16 tunes. Yeah. And I'd, I'd woodshed them really hard for about a week. <laughs> and then they'd get on the on the tour with us and we'd do the tour and we'd usually start somewhere around Kiev and go all, all the way down to So Brownsville. right from Ukraine, you find yourself in Brownsville. Well, I, I, I'm at Brownsville. I, I, I told him before I went to work at Brownsville. I had this tour to do and Pastor John was fine. So I go do the tour. On the way back, uh, I, I land in JFK Airport in New York and John tells me that, Lyndall, you're not gonna believe it, but, but God has come down in, in Brownsville. And I was like, really? He said, yeah, we started Sunday. And this was probably Tuesday. So I'm, I'm still trying to get home. Pastor John never used those words loosely with you, did he? Oh, no, 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 no. If he said it, you can bank on it. Completely. And so I got home on Tuesday. I got home Wednesday afternoon sometime. Yeah. And uh, my first service was Wednesday night. Wow. What was it like, like going into it? I mean, you went for five years. Mm. I think you told me. It, this is a funny story. When I was in Lakeland in 2008, I called Lendl, got to know him. We got to know each other. Yes. And I said, Lendl, what's your greatest advice for me? And I was waiting for this really big spiritual, <laughs> you know, this oh. great spiritual thing. But you know what? The advice you gave me saved me. Right. He said, son, here's what I would tell you. You need to go get yourself some sneakers and get a rubber mat because you're going to be standing on your feet a long time. <laughs> and that's exact. I went to Lowe's that night, got yeah. a mat, yeah. got some sneakers, some Nikes, and that to. was it. You have to. I, yeah. I had to. Yeah. But but the reason I bring that up is because you you went. You told me you went for nine months without a break. Oh yeah, we had. Oh yeah, for sure. There was no like, let's take a few days off and well, relax. We, we went from June to Christmas time, and we Amazing. took a week off, and then. The whole next year. No. I Listen, you, you want to hear the rest of the story. Um, we're going to take a break and come right back. We're with Lendell Cooley. Uh, we're going to cut to a clip. I want to give you just a taste of what it was like in Brownsville. Just a little tiny clip. And then I want to show you something new that Lendell's doing when we come back. We'll be right back after this with Lendell Cooley. There's deliverance in your glory. There's deliverance in your glory 
There's deliverance in your glory So Lord, send your glory There is freedom in your glory Freedom in your glory There is freedom in your glory Freedom in your glory So Welcome back to All Together Now. That was powerful, man. That, listen, I was touched through the Brownsville Revival. God used Lindell, Steve Hill, and Pastor Kilpatrick to touch me personally. And I know there's many, many millions that were touched around the world. And you know, Lindell, I want to come back to you now. You know, we did a show just recently together on an, another network. Right. And my... My, my greatest thing that I pulled away from watching you lead worship and being touched and then it caused me to worship is you would, you would literally look off into the ceiling. There's nobody there. I, I knew you weren't looking at a person. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like you weren't even really aware that people were there sometimes. Mm -hmm. But all I could do is, I, all I could picture, and I, I'm sorry, maybe it's from watching too many movies or something, but all I could picture was like Jesus in a toga basically hanging out on a raft or just sitting there watching you. That's what I visualized. Mm -hmm. And you made, you, I'm sure many other people can say the same thing. You made Jesus so real that I said, this guy knows him. He really knows him. He doesn't just say, I love Jesus. I mean, you were, there is healing in your glory. Like, mm -hmm. what was going on with you, man? What was going on with you? You weren't just leading worship. You were going through stuff yourself where God was touching you. Well, sure, yeah. What was happening? Well, I, I first, you know, the story is fairly known, but, but I went through a time of, of uh, the end of 94, uh, most of 94. Um, I, the church I was working at in Nashville, I finished that around January of 94. So I went into this February through the end of the year really dark place where um, just bombarded with what I believed, what I knew to be God, what I, I was raised in the miraculous, the supernatural, believed in all of it, saw it, just didn't hear about it. And just got to a place where I just didn't know what I believed anymore. And it was really, really a, 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 a crucible. And, and in kind in of a dark so, place. Very much. And in yeah. doing so, I got to a place where I just, I was shaken with what all I believed. I wasn't sure what I believed. And when revival came and I was sitting there on the front row of Brownsville, sitting at a keyboard every night, it was God just gradually undoing all the calloused hardness and all of the uh, all of that. He was undoing that layer by layer by layer, piece by piece by piece. Yeah. And so literally, the relationship with God was coming into a place where uh, he was as real as anything in the room because it wasn't about ministering to people, because I'd worked in ministry a long time, and I'd seen good, bad, and ugly, and I'd seen a lot of men get glory for a lot of things that God did. And I so wanted to see God just be God. So I would almost go against the grain of what was expected of me, because I knew how to, I knew how to pull the right levers, sing the right songs, get the audience with me, and I just didn't want to do that. Can so I just the say, the focus I, was all about the Lord. I never for one moment 
ever felt in all the years that not only that I've known you, but even back from then till now, I never one moment felt that you were ever performing. Well, it was, again, that was the crucible. And you were coming out of the performance life. Like you were coming out of that whole yep. genre, right? Yes. And so when I have this time with the Lord after this dark period, I am so broken that God literally restores my innocence in the process of the first six months of revival. Wow, man. And, and I, I laid some pretty strong words to, before the Lord. I said, look, Lord, if you heal me of this cynicism and this criticism, I'll never pick it up again. And so during revival, when I'm leading worship, I'm focused on the Lord. And I don't care if anybody's there. Because yeah. I'm not doing classic worship leading. I'm not, people now, you know, everything's got to be just perfect. And I'm not against all that. I, I practice, I, I have, I, we do things a little differently now. But in this season of my life, I didn't want to, I didn't care if I knew the songs. I didn't care if I sang songs. I just sing whatever came to my spirit to sing to the Lord. And there, it was all just very vertical. I mean, we do upbeat, happy stuff, but we'd also, when we got into intimate worship with the Lord, it was all about Him. D define vertical for the layman that doesn't understand worship was directly terms. to the Lord. We to were, Him. We were not singing about Him, we were singing to Him. Now we'd do Enemies Camp and all those sure. happy songs sure. because, you know, matter of fact, I think right now worship could use a good infusion of a little bit of joy. Yeah, and, I know, agree with really that. It's really kind of hard to be <laughs> joyful and cool because the really joyful songs are corny. Yeah. So in order to really be joyful, a little corn has to come. You just gotta, <laughs> you gotta get over yourself, be a little corny, right? I mean, you don't get much cornier than Enemies Camp, okay? That's right. But, but, but. I so loved weird. Enemies Camp. Well, I so still weird. love Enemies Camp. It was so weird, camp. I never wanted to sing it. And I had this guy tell me one day, I've sung it for years, right? And we going out for a Friday night service at Brownsville. And I said, I'm never singing that dumb song again. I'm so sick of it. I just can't stand it. Because again, I try to be a musician and an artist and moody and broody and all that stupid stuff. I think you were like that with the White Horse song I've too, right? I've overgrown all that. I'm fine with it. <laughs> but, but it, it, you know, he, he said, I dare you. Walk out there and sing it tonight just like it's the first time you sing it and just watch, watch what God does. So I got there, enemies camp, and, and literally everybody's dancing and going crazy. And, and it wasn't emotional, it was just like there's a breaking thing. There's something about seeing somebody act like an idiot. There was an gives, excitement. No, no, I'm serious, not just excitement. Okay. It's like when the worship leader gets out of his comfort zone and just goes for Let's it. Let's it go. It gives, you know, if you're going 150, then they're going 20 that they've never gone before. They're like, well, if he's doing that, I can bounce, you know. So, so, so we, you know, so we, it would just get crazy. But, but, but that's why you felt like the Lord was there on the balcony because oh, that's truly what was happening. Because I was focused. I would find a light and just focus on the light. And I would just think about being in the presence of God. I'd think about being before the throne of God. I'd think about being in that, that all-consuming light that's around the throne of God. The Bible says in Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, he's the light of the city because there's no shadow or turning. Right. In and so I just saw this brilliant light and I realized that I was so broken and so messed up, so hateful, so used up, so cynical, and there was no good reason, Roy, why I should be standing behind that keyboard. There was no good reason that I shouldn't be there. I wasn't talented enough. I wasn't cool enough. I, I could play, you know, but I wasn't a singer and, and I wasn't going after God when revival came, I shouldn't have been there. It was only the sweet love of Jesus and the mercy of God and the prayers of my parents and God's calling on my life that had me there. And I mean, it just permeated my very being. I went, I shouldn't be here. So I'd literally play the keyboard and sometimes, some nights I'd just weep through half of the song because it shouldn't be there. And you know, and God's doing this and I'm like, I shouldn't be here. Why am I here? I shouldn't be here. Wow. And so when I'd focus on that light, I'd just go, this is for you, Father. And if I ever felt like I would be performing, then I would just go spontaneous so I would look like a fool purposely. Well. Because I know how to play. I know how to play flat 13. I grew up playing gospel. I can play keyboards. I know how to do that. I know how to, but for Brownsville, it wasn't about that. It was about me literally just undoing what I knew how to do and just going, I refuse to do this. I, I want to go deeper in this. And unfortunately, because we have airtime that runs out, Yeah. here's what I want to do for you that are watching. Are you enjoying what you're hearing? I'm sitting here feeling the Holy Spirit just while I'm sitting here. I don't know what's going on with you, but I. You, you, you mentioned just yesterday, you said you felt like something's happening, like there's something going on. And I want to talk about that. 
And here's what was gonna happen. We're gonna extend this right now by if you go to runwithfire.tv, we are gonna continue this conversation and it's gonna get deep. See, we're limited by television, so we run out of time now. But if you'll right now go to runwithfire.tv, you will now see the continuation of this program. Lendl, thanks for coming to the studio. I'm looking Thank forward you, to this next section and uh, we appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man, I enjoy it. It's Thank awesome, so it's an honor to be here. Listen, we'll be right back next week. Watch the same time, same channel. Thanks for watching all together now. And again, go to runwithfire.tv and you can watch the continuation of this. For now, this is Roy Fields and Lendl Cooley. We'll see you. God bless you.